every good story starts at the very beginning with, uh, with something that entices people. So for anyone who knows the Chateau Magot, it's a very expensive wine. It, it, uh, it actually retails at about $195,000. So as you can imagine, uh, very specific people can afford this type of wine, or collectors will be able to um, buy this specific bottle of wine. So as you can imagine, uh, in the autumn of uh, 2015, when this sold at 195000 this attracted a lot of attention for these collectors and for these wine connoisseurs that wanted to either try the wine or own that bottle of wine. Just to tell you, this, this, this specific bottle of wine is, is, is obviously a 12-liter bottle, but still, if you think at 195000 can you imagine what one liter would actually cost? Which brings me to the beginning of the story. So this specific domain is called Qualitate. Um, it's, it's a... It's a, a website that sells very expensive uh, wine uh, alcohol. So very specific people will go to this website and buy the bottle at a certain price. What makes this really interesting is it's, a, it's an actual Japanese site. And as you can imagine, the Japanese have a very fine taste in wine. So um, they obviously want to sell the best stuff. But this also attracts a lot of the collectors and uh, the, uh, the people that want to buy these expensive bottles of wine. But the problem here is, is that when you go ahead and buy a bottle of wine at the specific domain or the specific website, you actually walk away with a little bit more of a surprise that's attached to it um, when you find out a couple of days later that you actually are being held at ransom uh, from a ransomware um, attack using the Lockheed ransomware variant. So sometimes the best hiding place is the one that hides in place site. And, and this is a, a great... Um, quote to actually demonstrate the capability of what Cisco Umbrella does. Uh, Cisco Umbrella is essentially a cloud-based solution, and it, it specifically uh, does security at the DNS layer. So this is not security for the DNS services. It's actually security from the attribution of data that we see on the number of requests that are made to specific domains. It's also a capability that we have using different algorithms to look at different patterns that tell us about how the actual attacker is architecting his specific attack at any point in time at a global scale. So these, this, is a, this is basically a page of our portal that you can go through and actually start picking all the indicators of compromise that are all available to anyone who's actually looking at it from a DNS perspective. And as you all know, DNS is you know, very critical to the infrastructure, so the attackers use DNS in order to talk back out to domains that are owning to them. So in this specific example, which is kind of interesting because if you look at the domain, anyone that looks at that domain name will go, well, malwareinstall.wang, that's self-explanatory. I'd never go to a site that tells me it's called malware install, correct? But essentially, this is not your normal domain that you'd automatically go and type into your actual browser. It's a domain that's used as part of an attack. And I'm going to, point, I'm going to collect all the dots and show you how we put this picture together. So the first thing we look at, as you can see, is the number of requests that are being made to that domain. We have a number of proprietary algorithms that basically look at different patterns that are happening across the world. And those patterns are all timed within a specific time span. So we can see that in the late autumn of last year, anyone that went to that qualitate.japan site uh, automatically was being hit at that point in time between the end of August to the first couple of days of September. And you can see there's a huge amount of spike in there. The other interesting that, thing that you'll notice is that there's actually nothing before that. So this is a very new domain that they started establishing to run the specific attack. The other thing that you'll notice, which is probably not very clear to you guys, but the, domain, the actual registrar for this domain, the email that was registered in this domain, is actually a Russian domain. So when you start thinking about Japan, you start looking at the Chinese domain, and then you see the Chinese domain is actually registered by a Russian alias. These things start to ring in your ears to tell you there's something going on here. But the other thing that we also see here, which is not very clear, he's created, or she's created, whoever that alias sits behind, has created 80 domains. Our intelligence has also told us that out of those 80 domains, 80 of them are actually malicious in intent. And we can actually pivot between all of those different types of domains to tell us all the different behavioral patterns that each of those domains that he's registered is actually doing at any point in time. The other thing that you'll notice is that we tell you when the attack first started happening. And it started first happening on the 30th of, of August 2016. And one of the key things is that we actually notice this 
a couple of days before some of these very valuable tools that a lot of people use out on the open internet. The other thing that we also pick up, which is another proprietary algorithm, is that we co-occurred with this domain. So what that means is any request that I'm making to malwareinstall.wang, I'm making the same number of requests 100% of the time going to the Qualitate site. So what co-occurrence means in its simplistic nature is that the number of requests just before or just after or even sometimes during on a specific time scale is being made to both sites, which tells us that they are, have a relationship, that they are part of the same attack chain. And that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on with that proprietary algorithm. Now, that probably maybe confused you, and a picture always speaks a thousand words, so I wanted to actually draw this out for you guys to see. Now, this is open graffiti. It's basically something that we offer free. One of our PhDs actually developed this while he was doing his thesis. And he wanted to basically take all the data that we see and put it into a picture so people would understand it better. So to give you a good picture of how this actually works, so all the red stuff that you see are all the domains that are actually being blocked by us. They're all malicious. They're all a part of the same attack chain, okay? There's the two domains that we've been looking at, the malware installer Wang as well as the Japanese site, the Qualitate site. We obviously showed you the co-occurrence, and then you can see the two uh, brighter circles there is the request being made to both of those domains at the same time within that specific time period. But we also show you the predictive nature of our actual algorithm. So we know that that specific domain is belonging to the Russian alias. He's also created a bunch of other domains that we know and can predict that he can swap and jump between the different domains in order to tell us further attacks. So if I can't get my infection done through malware install, I will try one of my other domains in future that will guarantee that I get my victim that I want to get. And then obviously you show the two domains at the bottom which are also connected to the same attack chain. But what are these doing is they've got a number of different yellow, which you can see is a bunch of hashes. All those hashes that are actually describing the yellow are all hashes that are malicious in intent. So they're all being hosted and at that specific domain at that specific time. And then we've got the IP addresses that connects to the same infrastructure that he's got established. So we can see the two, the, the two IPs that are connecting the two name servers, the name server infrastructure, which is this green over here, which has also got a couple of domains that is hosting as malicious intent. Now one of the key things that any attacker does at any specific time is always going to use domains and infrastructure that he can use in order to be as transparent as possible. So that's why he creates a whole bunch of domains like you saw 80 domains and he basically can run Robin between those domains or in this specific case have enough victims to run that attack for a couple of days without actually being noticed. And this is all available through what we see and what is hosted on the internet. Now to drive it really home. You can see here, that is the current malware distribution point. You can see the, we, how we expose the attacker's infrastructure name servers and IP addresses that they're using. And then finally, what is the next malware distribution points on the actual attack infrastructure? So the only worst thing that being blind is having the site but no vision, right? We can all see these things, but until someone puts them into perspective, do we actually understand how the attack chain is put together? And that's where Cisco Umbrella comes into the actual picture. So we are seen as the first line of defense, um, meaning that before you make any request out on the internet, before you make a port 80 or 443, you know, the stuff that we use to get to those domains, you will do a DNS request, meaning that you want to get to that specific domain and you want to know where it lives. If we don't resolve where it lives, then you cannot make a port 80 or 443 request, which means we're blocking you from ever knowing where that domain sits. And the only reason we will block it is if a domain is obviously malicious. So we will uh, we'll obviously precede any sort of file execution. So what that means, when you start putting the picture together, anyone that's going to the Qualitate site that gets that exploit kit run and then starts to call back out to the other domains like malware install to get the payload for Locky, we will obviously precede that file infection. So we'll stop you from ever resolving to Qualitate because of it being part of an attack chain. Now, obviously numbers are very critical to understanding how the infrastructure works. We, um, 
We are built into the infrastructure of the internet. We are based as an any cost, a BGP any cost system, which means that any customer that uses our service will, will always resolve to the closest data center with low latency, very secure connection, and will always be you know, safe from any sort of attacker. Sorry, I'll skip that one there. So the other thing is also that we, we pair with 500 different service providers and CDNs across the world. And we also see about 4% of the worldwide DNS. Now, when you compare us to Google, Google sees between 5 and 6%. We see between 4 and 5%. So we see a large majority of the internet. Some of the numbers that are going to be really interesting to you is we see about 100 billion requests on average every single day. We, have, we see about 85 malicious destination. Uh, we see about 85 million users. We've got about 18,000 customers that use our service. And then we obviously distribute it across 160 countries that use our service. Our efficiency is based on this. We discover more than 3 million domains every single day. Some of them are obviously going to be malicious. Some of them are obviously benign. We identify about 60,000 daily malicious destinations on a daily basis. And we're actually blocking 7 million destinations just by resolving the DNS. So when you think about this quote, it's pretty much like I've said, if you think about how the attack was run, Qualitate was, the, was a, as a, actually a, a, a legitimate site that was selling, the, you know, obviously good expensive wine. It was a very targeted attack because obviously anyone who went to that site was guaranteed to have the money to buy a bottle of wine at that expense. But what they didn't know is they were going to walk away with this lucky ransomware, which means that their data would automatically be ransomed and they'll would, they would be guaranteed to pay for that data, or if they were lucky, they'll obviously resolve to a previous backup. Uh, we obviously showed you the connection to the actual domain that, that malware installed. That was a domain that was actually doing the payload drop of Locky onto, onto the actual endpoint, which means that uh, when you connect that dots and you see how they're hosting the infrastructure of the internet, you can see how we can actually build a picture of all the different interactions, the infrastructure that the attacker uses, and obviously the legitimate sites that are being abused by that system at any point in time. <clears throat> 